Philippines President Rodrigo Roa Duterte. Here's what you don't know about why Filipinos support Duterte. Digong might be a tough talking president with horrible jokes, but he has a frail heart. He feels for the poor. He feels for the victims of lawless violence. He hates the criminals and bluntly cusses them on national television. His rivals attack him for his style, or lack of it. But President Duterte is no pushover, and just like him, his supporters are prepared to take some flack. Too often in the international media, the voices of the Filipinos who support Duterte go unheard. Whatever you think of his polices, it is their opinions that will make the difference in our democracy. Here's a selection of reasons why Filipinos in the Philippines and around the region still support Duterte. Duterte is a strong-willed leader. He walks the talk and he is truly concerned about his countrymen's welfare. Eliza Yara, banker. He's the most practical and the best choice among the candidates. I felt his passion in serving the Filipinos and his eagerness to improve our lives. Michelle Go, Filipino nurse in Singapore. He's a disciplinarian, a man of action, a fellow BISA, and the only deserving presidential candidate. Fred Gabales, nurse. I want corruption, job contractualism, illegal drugs, and lawless crimes to end. He is the only person I see that can make changes on these. He's aggressive and fearless. Filipinos need a firm disciplinarian like him. Roxanne Araniador, tattoo artist. I am desperate for change. Mark Real, musician, Yek Pilpil and Peace Pipe Band. I saw command and results in President Duterte even before he confirmed he was going for the presidency. Davao City is evidence of how effective he is as a leader. I believe he can provide the discipline that the Filipino people truly needs. Daniela Prietos, psychology student. University of Negros Occidental Recoletos. President Duterte is tough on crimes. He is fair and a patriot who fights corruption. He's looking out for the good of the country, and most of all, he fights radical extremists and terrorists. Generoso Alagado, fisherman. He is very down to earth. Despite having the highest position in the country, he remains humble, a firm disciplinarian, and is desperate to fight corruption and illegal drugs. Stephen Marie, Educator. President Duterte promised to go after the illegal drugs problem in the Philippines at all costs, something that he never hid during his campaign. The Filipinos gave him the go signal to do his job. Unlike other politicians, he makes good on his promises. He can do anything he wants in pursuit of his mandate, waging the drug war because he is not beholden to anyone. He never begged for money from any interest that may be drug tainted. He doesn't have a strong party influence. He did not beg us to vote and campaign for him. His concept of perpetuity is not prolonging his power or that of his party or interest, but by leaving a legacy because that was what he promised to us, to end his term with the Philippines way better than he started. Rochelle Palma, businesswoman. I believe in the rule of law, and I was so impressed with him when he was still a mayor. Basically, I was trained by my parents to be a law-abiding citizen, and I get irritated when people try to get away with violations. So I dreamed of having a president who could properly implement rules, but still have a heart. Kyria, Baker My love and loyalty brought me back in the year 2002 when I first set foot in Davao City. The mayor, as he was then, had a foul mouth. Crude as he was with his opponents, he was already a loving mayor to his people. I finally understand what has been taught about the government, of the people, by the people, and for the people. So, I knew without a doubt. He can make the Philippines a better country to live in. Hardy D. Son, call center employee. I voted for Duterte not only because I believe in his capacity to lead our nation, but also because of his accomplishments as a mayor, congressman, and prosecutor. He is known for his compassionate and dedicated nature as a servant and leader. I have witnessed it myself for the past 20 years as a resident of Davao City. He's very down to earth, his heart is with the poor, and he is very approachable. Most of all, he hates corruption and illegal drugs. Nexi Roldan, Davino Lee. Digong was known for being a crime buster long before he ran for the presidency. I believe he possesses the competence to be a leader and wipe out all crimes in the country. Corruption in the government is insane, and just like me, my fellow Filipinos are frantic to finally see changes. I believe he is the person who can help us. In Davao City, rules and public discipline, anti smoking, firecracker ban, speed limit, and more are strictly implemented. Violators would end up in the streets for community service or in jail. Vanessa Nona, Davino. 
President Duterte might have a big mouth. He doesn't know that his jokes are awful that makes him look like the villain. But he is a hero to many Filipinos, the man who would stake his life in pursuit of giving his people a safe and better Philippines. There is little doubt that Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte is a populist. The rise of Duterte, a populist revolt against elite democracy, the Filipino leader has often presented himself as the voice of the people, the guardian of the nation, the shield against criminal elements, and, in an often messianic vein, as the country's final hope and savior. As U.S. political scientist Jan Werner Muller notes, populism is inherently anathema to liberal democracy and principles of pluralism. After all, populists, as in the case of Duterte, have an exclusivist notion of national interest and Rousseau-esque general will, whereby only the leader and his supporters truly represent the people. In contrast, critics and opponents are often portrayed as the enemy, bent on preserving the status quo at the expense of the masses. This explains why, for instance, Duterte often accuses his critics of engaging in sabotage and hatching up a supposed destabilization plot. He has rarely shied away from threatening his opponents with impeachment, imprisonment or worse. Duterte also epitomizes the populist style of leadership. As Benjamin Moffat explains in his latest book, populism is essentially about bad manners, the calculated defiance of the established rituals of power in order to project authenticity. Duterte's invective lace pronouncements, which often drive his affinity with his audience, are a quintessential expression of his populist appeal. One can be populist but not necessarily popular, as in the case of U.S. President Donald Trump. Duterte, however, has maintained high approval ratings since coming to power last June. He is often portrayed as one of the world's most popular leaders, along with the likes of Vladimir Putin of Russia, 